so welcome students today we will talk about the important biogeochemical cycle that is the water cycle or hydrological cycle so we will talk about it in detail like you have all uh, you have all seen the rains you have seen the rivers you have seen the ponds seas oceans so these are all the water bodies so these water bodies have their own source of water so we will talk about firstly how this water is getting constantly recycled okay the water is recycled in a process recycle means you can see the water on the earth going to the environment by the process of evaporation i think if you have to just recollect what is evaporation you have seen it uh, in your home when you just boil the water you have seen the water boiling when the water boils you can see there is so much of vapors coming up so that vapors same procedure we have water bodies like rivers lakes oceans so this uh, water is getting heated up and who is heating this the source that is sun with this sun rays the water is getting heated up and with that heating what is happening is the vapors vapors are moving up vapors so these vapors that is evaporation this process evaporation means where water gets converted into vapors so these vapors getting into the atmosphere so here this atmosphere it, it is getting accumulated in the form of clouds you have seen clouds in the sky so it is getting accumulated in the form of clouds and these clouds when it cools down the vapors when it cools down that is that process is called as condensation same again you can just go to that water which is boiling there is vapors and just cover it with a lid when you cover it with a lid and just take out that lid you can see the water droplets falling down same procedure exact that mechanism is taking place here in this water cycle also the clouds which contains water vapor it is getting condensed okay condensation condensation means the vapors getting once again transformed into what water so there is condensation and it comes down in the form of rains you have noticed i think when there is a rains the sky looks very cloudy when you see the dark clouds you assume or you guess that it may rain today so that clouds there is the accumulation of what water vapor and from where this water vapor is coming it is coming from this water bodies like rivers lakes oceans so from here the water is moving up to the environment in the form of vapors by the process of evaporation then it comes down again in the form of rain see recycling this is recycling water going up into the environment into the atmosphere in the form of vapors that is clouds again it is coming down back to the earth in the form of rains so this cyclic way or this recycling of water by a process that process is called as which cycle water cycle so this is not that it is taking place in only one day or two days this is continuously taking place continuous recycling continuous recycling of this water and only uh, this water getting heated up only that may not be the source there are some other sources like i have drawn a tree here so there are so many trees which gives out water by the process of transpiration you have learned about the transpiration process transpiration means loss of water in the form of vapors from the leaves understood so transpiration also is a reason or it is also one of the factor which is sending the vapors into the environment evaporation is one one of the reason then we have transpiration then there are so many other factors like precipitation precipitation means again there are so much uh, there is so much of clouds coming down in the form of rains then sometimes again there is a heavy rain and what is happening there is washing down of waters from the hills from the low lying areas water is flowing back to the rivers and lakes and ponds and finally it is going into sea 
so this constant recycling this is called as which cycle water cycle or it's also called as hydrological cycle so these two names you have to remember water cycle hydrological cycle so for that there is a very beautiful figure on page number 171 okay water cycle is represented in a diagrammatic way very beautifully in this figure one okay you can see it very clearly and just beside that there is a definition of this water cycle okay so everyone go through this page number 171 and figure one so when you come back to the next page it is talking about how there is a balance how this balance between this biotic and abiotic factors when i say biotic biotic means living there is one more factor called as abiotic abiotic means non living factors so there is constant interaction between this biotic and abiotic factors in the environment and this constant interaction leads to the formation of this biosphere you know what is the meaning of biosphere biosphere means the zone where there is uh, living organisms that means plants flora fauna all living together in this biosphere that means the zone which supports life is called so you got the significance of this water cycle so just once again we will go to the recap of what we learnt water cycle so water cycle is water is just constantly recycled okay recycled in a process called as water cycle or hydrological cycle so you can represent it in this form or there is a very beautiful diagram there figure 1 in our textbook so now now we should talk about the importance of this water you all know yesterday i told you about the uh, how water is a universal solvent first point you have to remember about water it is a universal solvent universal solvent solvent in the sense it is uh, it forms it can the all the compounds or the elements found can get dissolved in this water maximum gets dissolved so and it is also essential for the various reactions taking place in living cell whatever reactions are there in our body in living cells all requires the medium which medium that is it requires water so now there is constant recycling that is you have to talk about water cycle and you talked about how much important is this fresh water fresh water we talked about fresh water there is only available percentage is only 1% right yesterday we told 1% of uh, fresh water is available now this uh, water acts as a universal solvent one point you have to remember the other point you have to remember is it also helps in the Uh, decreasing the level of pollution also like if there is so much of pollutants in the water in the water causing water pollution if there is more water added it will decrease the intensity of the pollutants we talked about pollutants so pollutant is the agents which cause pollution so with this increase in the water that means water decreases the intensity of pollutants because it is flowing it is, as the water is flowing it decreases the intensity of the pollutants next you have to talk about how this sometimes this also creates trouble like some harmful substances like suppose you have a factory here so this factory is releasing some chemical some chemicals are released into the water so these chemicals getting mixed with the water and this water is being used for consumption so that can cause some if uh, you have heard about minamata disease okay heavy metals getting dissolved in water causing different kinds of diseases so that is one problem the other one problem you have learned about is the acid rains if you remember acid rains which was affecting one of our uh, wonder of the world that is taj mahal so that acid rain also is one of the effect you see acid rain means here uh, harmful gases like sulfur dioxide nitrogen dioxide getting mixed with the which water rain water and falling down in the form of acid rain so that is the uh, the other side of the coin 
like every coin has two uh, two sides the first side we told is a useful side it helps in the dissolution or decreasing the intensity of pollutants the other aspect it is causing which rains acid rains so this acid rain is a harmful effect so this is water cycle so the next uh, biology